morning. It's about just after five in the morning. It's about our angle, you can see my face now. Just about to head out to the reef. It was a bit touch and go yesterday, the wind was up, but it's dropped back down to about four knots. So it should be a good ride out there. Hopefully it stays good all day. There's a couple of rain clouds getting around. So hopefully we don't get too wet. But um, it's been a while since we've been out, so we'll give it a go. Anyway, I'll see you out there. We just got out here to the reef. It's glass, the lake out here, check that out. Couldn't ask for better conditions. Got a big flat cloud over there though. Keep our eye on. A few of the rain clouds getting around. Just having a sounder around now, trying to find some fish, which looks like we've just gone over a bit. So we'll have a look around here and might have a drop. See if we can find something, pull something up. All right. Bit of a little storm cloud either side of us. Just heard a bit of a crack of thunder, so it might get interesting. Hopefully it stays calm and they both go that way. We'll see. It's going to be raining on us very soon. And it's raining. Time to hide under the cover for a little bit while we get this rain shower going over us. Yeah. Couldn't stay long, but I'm about to clean the boat. It's good to keep over the fish, too. Spangled Emperor. Oh, no, man. Spangled Emperor. There you go. Oh, you just got off the hook. Thank you. 
Something good. Let's see what it is. Hopefully, another trout. He'd be good. That's what? Yeah. Red bass. Red bass. Yeah, there you go, man. Decent sized red bass. Hold on to the camera. Yeah. Red bassy. They do a great monster. <laughs> nice teeth. Can't keep them because they've got sick of terror poisoning. Some parts of the world, they actually eat these before they'll eat a trout. They're actually better. Alright. Ready? Yep. Come on, buddy. I'll see you guys. Dave, on. Double hooker. Hey, hey, hey. They're thick down there. Both large mouth, two for one. Can't complain about that, eh? Small mouth. Hey. 
Big bludger. Yeah. Big small mouth. Lost the cobia to a massive shark. Uh, we've got one last bait out. We're going to try and head in. Bit of a storm cell over here. We've got to beat that down in front of that. So we've got a few nanny guy here. Then we've got about seven or eight. And um, yeah, it's been a pretty slow day. We've got a few in the end, so it was worth it. But now we've just got to venture across this shipping channel, and it's a bit windy at the moment, so it might be a bit of a, a bit of a slow drive home. But we're about to pull up and head home, I think. So. Thanks for coming. I'll see you on the filling table and I'll see you again in the kitchen. Cheers. Hey guys, just about to fill it up this largemouth nanny guy. I only got a few in the end, and they're getting a bit rough out there. I had to head back in. Picked up to about 15 knots of wind, and it was probably about 0.8 of a meter of swell, so it was a bit lumpy on the way back in, but had to work hard for them. Got a couple in the end, so hopefully get out again next week and chase some finger mark. But um, here we go, I'll fill this one up, and then we'll cook it later in the kitchen. I'm just giving these uh, Gerber knives a bit of a test. Just got a few of them, made them and got me onto them. They seem pretty good, pretty sharp. They come in a pretty cool case. Got their own sharpening steel on the case as well. So I've got a few different sizes. Use the short one just to start the fillet with. And then I'll use a bit longer one for the skinning. I'll let you know what I think. But they seem pretty good so far, they've got a nice sharp edge on them, nice point to work with, really good handles on them, great grip, so when you've got slimy hands from the fish, easy to keep a hold of them. They seem to hold their edge for a while as well, so don't have to keep sharpening them as often, just some of the cheaper knives. You can get them from most dive stores, they do a lot of dive knives and stuff like that. You can buy them online, I bought these ones online. So. This is the shorter blade one, I think that might be the 6 inch. I think this one is probably the 7 inch here, which I use for the skinning. Nice and flexible, which is what you need for skinning a fish.
See, it makes the job easier if you've got a good knife. See, I definitely can't fault these knives at all. I've used a few different knives before. And these are pretty good. So I recommend getting them. And that's done. Large mouth and any guy. I'll see you in the kitchen. G'day guys, welcome to the kitchen. Tonight I'm going to be doing a Penang curry. Again, I'm using the Mayploy brand, which is the best brand you can get. You can get it from all your Asian stores. Um, we're going to cook up the nanny guy that we caught um, on our last trip out. So I've got some coconut milk here, organic coconut milk. I'll, I'll run you through the ingredients quickly. I've got some scorpion chilies here I've got from the garden. Kiffa lime leaves, got some diced onion, a bit of radish. Got some star anise here, a uh, bit of garlic, a bit of ginger. Got the fish, some asparagus, some zucchini, and some broccoli. So I'm using four star anise, about five kiffa lime leaves. That's probably about two or three tablespoons, maybe two and a half tablespoons of garlic, and about three, three and a half tablespoons of ginger. And the rest, veg and fish, just to, to depending on how many people you're going to feed. Depending on how many people you're going to feed, that's do enough. So I've only got three fillets of fish there. And I've got three tins of coconut milk. So I'm actually just had a look through the cupboard for some jasmine rice. And I'm actually out of jasmine rice. So I'm going to do brown rice. Something different, a little bit healthier. And um, yeah, I'll run you through it all. Here we go. So these scorpion chilies, I'm going to chop those up. They're really, really hot, so you don't need, don't need a lot. It's going to be quite a fiery curry. Not a lot of seeds in these ones. I grew these myself. Must be a certain time of the year or something. Nice amount of sesame oil. And a little bit of rice bran oil as well. So I'm going to slowly sweat off the onions and while they're sweating off on a low temperature, I'm going to put my rice on and get that ready. I won't run you through the rice, I'm showing you how to cook rice. Alright, whenever you chop up chilies, be sure to wash your hands, especially chilies this hot, wash your hands with soap. I just touched myself right there and it's burning like crazy. But um, I do it all the time. <laughs> Anyway, I always forget when I'm chopping chilli, rub my eye on my nose or something. Alright, so I'll just put the rice on. Now I'm going to start adding ingredients. So first things first is we're going to add the ginger, the garlic, the kiffa lime, the chilli and the star anise and some radish as well. Turn that up and give it a good stir. You smell those flavours instantly coming out. Right now I'm going to add some of this curry paste. Um, I'm just going to do that by eye. There's 400 grams in the packet. So I'll probably use maybe a third. Just over a third. No, about, about a third actually, I think. So we'll break that curry paste up a bit. Give that a bit of a stir. Alright, while that's cooking, just make sure you shake up. Your coconut milk. Alright, I'm going to cook that curry paste a bit to bring the aromatics and the flavour out before I add the cream. Actually, I'm going to throw the radish in as well because that needs a bit more to cook than the fish and the other veggies. So we'll throw the radishes in now. I 
I've got a bit of a stir. Let that cook for a little while. So it's had a good bit of a cook now. Now I'm going to add the coconut milk. All three tins. I'm also going to add about a cup of water. I'm going to use the water to rinse out the coconut cream, coconut milk tins to make sure I get all that coconut milk out. And give that a good stir. It's just a matter of bringing that to the boil for about five minutes after it starts simmering. And then we'll add the green veg, give it another couple of minutes. And the fish, since I'm using a delicate fish like an guy, I'll put it in right at the end so it doesn't break up. If you've got something that's a bit tougher, like a spangled emperor or something, you can put it in a bit earlier because it won't break up. And if you actually look, I did spangled emperor with a green curry on episode 7. So if you want to have a look at that, if you like your curries, there's a green curry on that. All right, I'm going to put a bit of this squid brown fish sauce in there. Decent couple of dashes of that. Give that a mix in. All right, that's coming along nicely now. Almost ready, the rice is almost cooked. Almost about to throw the vegetables in. I just tasted it and there's quite a bit of kick to that, so with uh, two scorpion chilies in there. It's quite spicy. So if you like your spice, add something like two scorpion chilies. If you don't like it that hot, just get a couple of normal red chilies from the supermarket. If you don't like it hot at all, just don't add chilli at all because usually it's a pretty mild curry. Um, yeah, so leave the chilli up to you. All right, so I'm just about to add these vegetables now. First I'll go on with the asparagus. Give that about 20 seconds before I add the zucchini and the broccoli. Just because asparagus is a little bit longer to cook. Alright, it's been about probably 30 seconds. I'm going to add the zucchini in now. Give that a bit of a stir. Alright, now I'm just about to add the broccoli. I think I was simmering the rest for about another 30 seconds before I added the broccoli and in about 30 seconds I'll add the fish. Alright so now I'm going to put the fish in. It's in decent sized chunks. Break that up. Give that a mix in. And now it's just a matter of letting that fish cook through gently. And that'll be ready to serve. That's the robo vacuum doing its job while I'm cooking. It's that background noise you've probably been able to hear through the video. It was an early wedding present for my family. Uh, me and the missus are getting married in May and if they honeymoon we're going to Fiji so I'll be taking my fishing rods and some fishing gear and cameras drone and everything, try and get some good footage and see if we can do an episode over there with some different species, so keep your eye open for that, that should be coming out in May, or not May, end of May, maybe early June, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Alright, that's almost ready. That's simmer away for another couple of minutes. Rice is almost ready as well. All coming together.
right, Robo vacuum is coming right behind me through the kitchen right now. Just had to step out of its way. But it's got to clean up after you. There we have it. Hanang curry, brown rice, vegetables, and a large mouth nanny goy. Looks delicious. So if you're into your curries and stuff like that, be sure to go and check out episode 7. Uh, I do a Spangled Emperor green curry there. So straight after this, go and have a look at that. And um, there's meals at the end of every other episode too, so go and have a look at all of them. Pretty good watch. And um, I'm going to keep them coming, so subscribe and like, and I'll keep them coming out to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.